Hi guys, welcome to Let's Talk Business. We put new videos up here every week, so don't forget to subscribe. Setting up shop on your own can be a scary prospect, both financially and emotionally. This is the reason, perhaps, that many choose to take the leap with a business partner. After all, surely two heads are better than one. But what happens should things go sour? How do you protect yourself and your business from the potential pitfalls? Well, earlier this week, I caught up with financial expert Ian Govia, who firstly explained the various options when starting up a partnership. There are three basic ways. One is as a straightforward partnership. The second is as a limited liability partnership. And the third is in a limited liability company. And what's the difference between those three then? The basic form, the partnership, effectively you are in partnership with somebody, you agree to work together to a common aim. It's governed by an act, a partnership act, which was written in the 19th century. Not much has changed since then. Effectively, if you're in partnership with somebody, you have joint and several liability over any debt. So if anything goes wrong, you as partners and as individuals are responsible for the debts of that business. With a limited liability partnership, you enter into an agreement to form a limited liability partnership under an act that came in a few years ago. And although you're trading as a partnership, each of you is a member of that limited liability partnership. And your liability is limited to what you invest in the partnership, in theory anyway. And a, a limited liability company has a life and existence of its own. The company has a separate existence. And if you invest in the partnership, as it were, through a limited liability company, you own shares in that company, you may be a director of that company, and also you are, if you're a director, you're also an employee of that company. So it has a separate life. And your liability is limited to the amount that you pay for your shares in the company. So if you set up a company with £100 worth of shares, in theory, your liability is limited to that £100. In practice, that's not always the way, because in this litigious age, obviously, people will try and pierce what they call the corporate veil. And that will be the same for the limited liability partnership as well. And that's the three options, the practical options. I think there's a little bit more to it than that, in a way, in as much as the people that you're working with, your partners, determine the way in which you want to set up these particular companies, so which one that you choose. So for certain situations, like family situations, or maybe your best friend or somebody you've never Mm -hmm. met before, are any of those formation types useful in themselves? That's not an easy question to answer, actually. Effectively, the business model that you choose, or the one that is right for the business. But of course, you've got to look into the personal interplay as well. You should never go into any form of partnership with your eyes closed. You've got to have your eyes wide open. You've got to be aware of unforeseen consequences of of doing what you're doing. And, you know, in my experience, I've seen families sort of not particularly happy after some years of working together. So when you set up any of these entities, you've got to look at what is the value of having that sort of entity. If you want a small business and you're not going to be turning over very much, then potentially you just form an ordinary partnership. But what you have to do is from day one, you have to decide effectively who's going to earn what, who's going to do what, what happens if it goes wrong, how are you going to split up? You've got to decide that from day one and you have to have a written agreement that allows you to get out of the partnership without too much of a mess. But a lot of people don't do that, do they? They go into it. Most people don't particularly in family partnerships, most people not have a partnership agreement from day one. And so whilst you're trying not to constrain the business, what you need to decide is what parameters you'll operate that business in. And if there is to be a parting of the ways, for whatever reason, you know, whether it be retirement, whether it be falling out, whether it be death, and we all die in the end, and and it does happen, businesses are left in the lurch because one of the partners or one of the investors or one of the directors has died or has been taken ill. And what happens to everybody else? What happens to their share of the business? Does it go to a family member? Does the other partner want somebody who they don't know very much about operating in the business instead of their you know, their known partner? All these things have to be thought about. So you could end up with somebody that you think, actually, I never set up this partnership with them in the first place and I wouldn't have chosen them. But because of the way in which that the partnership may be Describe when you start off, you could end up with somebody in your partnership that you never really wanted in the first place. Well, expected. A- absolutely. I mean, when you have a partnership agreement, one of the things I always say is that each partner should not be able to dispose of their part of the partnership without the agreement 
or first refusal being given to the other partner. For example, say if you and I are in partnership and I come in tomorrow morning to work and I find somebody else sitting in your chair because <laughs> in the pub the night before you sold your partnership share to somebody else. And that can happen. And that can legally happen without a partnership agreement. There's a whole raft of stuff that we won't have time to go through, clearly. Where will people go to find out a little bit more information? There's a lot of advice online. The government, actually, on uk.gov, a lot of information about setting up businesses, basic information that you can get for free. So I would recommend that you get as much information as possible. You've got this business idea in your head, but don't just think, I can start a business. Yes, you can. Businesses are more likely to fail if they haven't been set up properly in the first place and effectively sort of thought about and planned for. I hope you enjoyed that. We upload new videos every week, so don't forget to subscribe. Subscribe.